they're coming off a pair of conference wins at home last week against Sam Houston and Stephen F. Austin. Tarleton not big. They start five guards, so the Aggies will have a healthy size advantage all evening here at the Pan Am. But they are scrappy defensively. One of the best defenses in the conference this year. Tarleton only gives up 64 points per game. Jabari Rice, a three, and that's good. Heck of a start on the first possession. That's what happens when you get the ball inside. They double team, kick it out, wide open three for Jabari. It's, it's nice to see it go in the basket at the beginning. The Aggies are hopeful they'll start shooting better for the arc. Only 32% for the year. Montre Gibson averaging 15 points per game. He's the smallest player on the floor for Tarleton, but he plays a whole lot bigger than 5'11". I think all these guys are going to have to play a little bit bigger than they're listed tonight. Aggie's got some size, but but you can see them come out here and they're playing some real good on-ball defense. They're making it tough. This match is all over the place defensively for Tarleton. Will McNair scores. He'll have about six inches all evening show on his defender. Yeah, and that and you got to get him the ball. He's going to have those six inches. If you see that 13, you got to give that the ball. Shamir Bogues for Freddie Hicks. He's been really good in league play. Wiped off the window by McCanson. Henry will push for the Aggies in the whites. Rice two for two, and he hasn't even hit the cylinder. He has splashed in a pair. And M State happy to be back home, happy to have the students back at home as well. Gibson misfires. McNair cleared it, and here comes Teddy Allen. Backdoor feed for Rice. It's stolen by Bogues. Tarleton forces 17 turnovers per game. And Bogues travels with it on the other end. And you can see early, they're going to come out. They're going to pressure the ball. You're going to see a body on Jabari. Uh, full court. They're not going to let him bring it up. Uh, they're going to make Clayton Henry bring it up. They're going to make Teddy bring it up. So other guys are going to have opportunities. There's Jabari hitting a three right there. And it's nice, if he gets going early, the Aggies are in a great place. The Aggies worked on a lot of ball handling out of the backcourt this week in practice because of the pressure from Tarleton. And Bogues applies it here on Rice and maneuvers into the front court. Trying to slip it down low for McCants. Struggles with the catch. And we will get a jump ball. Possession points to Tarleton. That's just, that's just Tarleton being scrappy. Expect that from them all night. They're going to be on the floor. Wow, they don't call a jump ball. They call a foul on McCants. Chris Chance can't believe it. So no jump ball. That was held for a good two or three seconds. Instead, McCants picks up his first personal on a night where the Aggies do not have you at ALAC, so they're a little thinner in the front court. So that could be an issue going forward. Aggies also without Nate Pryor tonight. He's also unavailable. Bogues a long two. Not a great perimeter shooter. And here comes Teddy Allen for the Aggies leading the break. Allen zigzags down the key. Can't finish. Henry got his hand on it. But it's scooped up by Noah McDavid for Tarleton. Quick pace to start this game. I think that plays into Tarleton's hands. They want the ball to go fast and so they can't get those mismatches exploited in the half court. And here's Montre Gibson. Henry checks him. McCants on the switch, defends Gibson. Hicks back door, Taj Small hits this side of the backboard. Great defensive possession for the Aggies. Rice with a hot hand early, thought about it. Extra pass, ducking underneath, and one for Johnny McCants. And that is a huge blocking call. If that would have been a charge, it would have been Johnny's second. Yeah, he did a nice job avoiding the charge. You can see a nice, po nice pass by Jabari. He avoids that charge, finishes the layup. He's grabbing his wrist a little bit, but I think he's fine. And Tarleton, they play that pressure defense, so they switch a lot on screens. So you're going to see the Aggies set a lot of screens with Johnny and with Will. And after that Rito. switch, they'll be able to get the ball inside. Johnny's been dealing with a finger injury recently, but he has shot free throws better than he ever has. 11 for 13 in the previous two games coming in for McCants. And you have to wonder if that wrist is really bothering him right now. 
7-0 Aggie run, a traveling violation called on Shamir Bones. Couple of unforced turnovers so far in the first three plus for Tarleton. Yeah, you can see he kicks it out. Just shuffles his feet a little bit right there before he dribbles, mm -hmm. yeah. Nothing the Aggies did right there on Forrest from Tarleton. Rice defended by Bowes. One of the better defenders in the conference. McNair in the high post. He finds Donnie Tillman who just checked in. Henry air balls the three. Way too strong and Bogues gets it on the backside. Here comes Gibson. Teddy Allen defends Gibson. Teddy has a lot of size or Montre Gibson. Here's Freddie Hicks right back to Montre Gibson. Aggie's doing a really good job in this sense so far tonight. A three for Gibson. It's contested. He hits it anyway. And Gibson has all five for Tarleton. Yeah, he's got a little swagger about him. Real poised. Just not phased by the environment at all. Gibson with 18 in each of the previous two games. He averages 15 a game. Allen outside for Henry. Shoots it with confidence, which you like to see. Henry now 0 for 2 from distance. Earning a start tonight. Gibson a quick release in transition. Might have been ill-advised. Picked up by McDavid. Gibson might have been more open than he thought. And he missed the teardrop. That's what they want, though. They want quick possessions, quick shots. They want the game to go fast. Donnie Tillman, after a great week of practice, the first off the Aggie bench. Rice glides in, finger roll no good. And that big right paw from Will McNair stuffs it in. Backdoor feed goes to Small, way too easy. Small beat Henry on the back door. Ah, Small coming off a great week, the WAC player of the week. 23 points per game in the two wins last week for Tarleton. A pair of good ones at home against Sam Houston and SFA. Teddy Allen swishes in the three. Another one, good to see them get some shots to go early. They didn't shoot it great last game. But, but this game is different when you're at home. You know, you feel a little confidence. Reach and foul on Teddy on the other end. Does not agree with the call. That's a great sign for Allen as he connected from three on the previous possession, only shooting 29% this year. Aggies ahead by eight early here at the Pan Am. One of the players that had a really good week in practice this week was Donnie Tillman. Christian's raved about him last night at our radio coaches show and he feels like Donnie Tillman's coming on which that's a scary thought for the opposition this year in the WAC. Yeah we were talking about it earlier Donnie has a skill set he has the body he could be the best player on the floor at any given night if he chooses to go and do that and with him getting his confidence back it's going to be nice to see what he can do. Chris Pian's remarks back in the fall, and he said it again last night, that in the fall, Donnie Tillman was arguably the Aggies' best player. And, and you look at the statistics right now, he's averaging eight points per game, three rebounds per game, so he's not at the top of the team in those categories, but he has that potential, and the Aggies are hoping he can reach that potential here in the final couple months. And that's the goal, not only for Donnie, but the team. If everyone can reach that final potential right there when the conference tournament starts to start, it's perfect for the Aggies. The Aggies also brought in Mike Peek during the timeout off the bench. Floater goes for Shamir Bogues. Tarleton won't sub much at all. They're only going to go about six or seven deep, so do not expect a lot of reserves coming in for second-year head coach Billy Gillespie, well-known in the coaching ranks, a former head coach at Kentucky, Texas A&M, Texas Tech. He was also down the road at UTEP for a couple of years. Mario McKinney also in for the first time. This is Rice with the basketball here, defended by Small. Six to shoot for Teddy Allen. Fires it for Tillman. And he doesn't draw the cylinder. Rebounded by Freddie Hicks. Three for Small is left short. And over the back is called on McDavid. 
That's going to be the whole game. That I mean, it's going to be long possessions for the Aggies. You see it over the back, the good box out by Teddy. He's been rebounding the ball great this season, but it's going to be tough for the Aggies on defense, and then it's going to be a real quick shot. I'm surprised that they only play six or seven guys the mm -hmm. way they play. Now, rarely do the Texans play more than seven. Might see a couple guys off the bench, but that's probably going to be it. And they start five guards, five listed guards, although Freddie Hicks is more of a guard forward combo. Step in three for Mario McKinney. Aggies cooling off from the arc now. Rice on the baseline, reverse layup, he left it short. Hicks was crashing hard, bodies go everywhere. And a foul is called on the Aggies. It'll go on Donnie Tillman. They might not be big, but they rebound pretty well for a team their size. Freddie Hicks is 6'6", but he rebounds like he's 6'10". Yeah, and that's everybody, you see everybody crash to the boards, two hands. They play that tough defense. They're always going to have a body on someone to box them out, and then they attack the glass on defense. A lot to talk to from Chris Jens this week about Tarleton coming in here prepared. They played one of the best schedules in the country in the night conference, so coming into this building against a program that has been the kings of the whack for a while, this should not intimidate Tarleton, and so far it hasn't, especially Montre Gibson, who now has eight of Tarleton's 12. And a foul 90 feet away from the hoop is called on Bogues for Tarleton. This building, Joe, can be a little intimidating for conference opponents, and I don't think Tarleton, because of their non-conference schedule, is phased a whole lot by this. No, not at all. I mean, they went to Wichita State, they went to Gonzaga, they played Michigan, Kansas. They played all the big schools, so they're they're ready to come into conference and really make some noise in conference and show what they can do. And they played a lot of those schools close. They only lost by nine to Gonzaga, lost by 11 at Michigan. Wichita State was a 14-point defeat, lost by 12 against Stanford. So they were not blown out in those games. Their winners uh, two straight and five of their previous six. The Aggies eight straight wins, five of those on the road. For Sean Cotton with the ball, he's off the bench now for the Aggies and Chris Jans. Once again, the Aggies without point guard Nate Pryor. He's unavailable tonight. Donnie Tillman called for three seconds in the key before he shot it. Donnie looks confused. The Aggies turn it over for the third time today. Their lead has dwindled to three. The scoreless drought is almost three minutes for the Aggies here at home. Adam Young, Joe Garza, Tatiana Favela with you from the Pan American Center. The Aggies haven't been tested much recently. They've won four straight games in double figures, including a 12-point win last Saturday at UTRGV, but we sure feel like they're going to be tested in both games this week. Looking ahead to Saturday, Abilene Christian is in town, and ACU a very similar team to Tarleton, undersized, but they play hard, very well coached, just like Billy Gillespie's Texans. So the scout will be a little different, but a little similar for both tonight and for Saturday. Yeah, it's going to be a test for the Aggies. Tarleton's going to, they wear you down the whole game with their pressure defense. And then you've got to go Saturday and play against Abilene Christian, who does a similar thing. That's This is where the Aggies' depth is going to come in handy. It's funny we're talking about a team that only goes about six or seven deep, wearing you down. These guys can just go and go. They're like the Energizer Bunnies. They have a lot of guys who play 35-plus minutes per game. In fact, they have three players averaging 34-plus minutes per game. And Montre Gibson leads the country in minutes. That's Noah McDavid. The WAC freshman of the week, 6'5 guard out of Dallas. And I hope we are still on the air, Joe. We just got, I mean, absolutely smothered over here. Joe took a charge. I can still hear. Our monitors are off, but we're good. I don't we love the hustle, Joe. I we love, love the, the hustle. I don't think my feet were set on that one. That's, that's got to be a block on me. I don't know how we're still in the air. We don't have our monitors, but that's okay. Alex Ramirez, our great engineer, will get us back up and running. Thank you, Alex. Appreciate it. 
I don't know who came screaming at us, but that all happened so quick. Is that what it's like to play in a Division One basketball game, Joe? Yeah, that's what it's like when everything goes so fast. You got to be prepared for anything. I'm not sure who that was. Uh, I, I think don't that know. That was Freddie Hicks. That was Freddie Hicks who bumped in. I'm sure we'll get a replay of it at some point. Thank you to Alex Ramirez, our engineer, who has his back up and running monitor-wise down here. iPad went flying, notes went flying. But Jones okay. J Jones the prize possession down here, so we're good. All right, that's what matters. That's what the <laughs> fans matter. Javante Hopkins is in now for Tarleton. Hicks is swatted. Here come the Aggies. Allen thought about it in transition. Rice made two threes early for the Aggies. Peek picks up his dribble. Rice backing down the 5'11", Gibson. Slings it out for Peek, a step in three. No good for Mike Peek, who's coming off a good shooting game at Edinburgh last Saturday. And that's a shot that the Aggies are gonna have. Tarleton does a great job packing the lane. Everybody's helping out, so those skip passes across for threes are gonna be there. Gibson again. That one skips off. Finally, he misses. Gibson eight early for Tarleton. McCann skips out for Peak. Henry, good positioning for McCants. He misses, but Peak is there to clean it up. Mike Peak does a great job crashing the boards. Hicks defended by McCants. He's stripped away by Teddy Allen. Rice with his eyes up, sends it ahead for Teddy. This is the three short peak coming our way again. I'm ready for a charge now, Joe. I'm in position now. Wasn't ready for it earlier. That's two times now. That's two times. I thought Mike Peak was coming straight for us. That was a good put back a few possessions ago for Peak. We got to get back settled here. Yeah, that gotta... stuff's everywhere still. <laughs> we have note cards everywhere, sticky notes everywhere, notes everywhere, cough drops everywhere. 9 10 left. The Aggies ahead by three. Andre Gibson gets a ball screen from Freddie Hicks. Hicks slings it out for Javante Hopkins. Doesn't shoot many threes, only his seventh try this year. Allen finds Henry, cuts to the rim. Slater is good for Clayton Henry. And when you're a shooter like Clayton Henry is, if you get an easy one at the basket like that, you might get an open three here in a little bit. Aggies with numbers. Allen can't take advantage. Misses the three. Hicks went sliding with the basketball. No traveling violation. Small finds McDavid. Small ran over McCants, and they let the play on. Texans back within three. Aggies going with Allen, McCants, Rice, McNair, and Henry. Allen rumbles down the key. A blocking foul is the call. Late call by the official. It'll go on McDavid. And we'll see if they give Teddy Allen free throws here. Looks like it was a little early, but that's what that's what happens. Great baseline drive and finish by Clayton. And like I said, to see the ball go in the basket for a shooter like that, you get an easy one. The next three doesn't seem so intimidating. McCants backing down Small. McCants blocked by Small. He's given up a few inches, but he's still swatted Johnny. Hicks pitches it outside for Gibson, swishes in the three. That's 11 now for Montre Gibson, the senior from DeSoto, Texas. And 
Rice gets small in the air, and Jabari will shoot two free throws on the other side of the break. Jabari made two three-pointers early. The Aggies have missed five straight from three after starting the game three for five from distance. And they've allowed Tarleton to get back into this game. 19-19, 7.33 left in half one. Hey guys. Hey guys, well Anwar has been one of the only members on Jan staff that has been by his side since coming to coach here at New Mexico State. Now this season marks his fifth season coaching the Aggies. And before this, he was actually coming from North Texas, Nebraska, and he was even a part of the UTEP staff. That's just to name a few. Now he's known as being a top-notch recruiter and has those several ties across the country as well. Anwar is a huge part of the Aggie success for the last four years now, since arriving with his dynamic duo partner, Coach Jans. Adam, Joe. Thank you, Tatiana. You played for David Anwar. He was on Chris Jans' staff, of course, when you played here, Joe, and you got to know Coach Anwar very well. Yeah, that's, yeah, Coach Anwar, well, I'll call him Coach Anwar. That's what, <laughs> that's what I know him as as well. Uh, he's, he does a great job. He's, He's a really good recruiter. He really relates to the kids and gets you to just to feel comfortable around him. And I really like him as a coach as well. He stepped into a bigger role. And, and when he does a scout, it's usually spot on. He's been extremely loyal, of course, to Chris Trient. He's been here from day one when coach arrived. Tillman, McCant, Rice, Allen, and Henry for the Aggies. Under 10 to shoot. Rice, a fall away. McCants the offensive rebound and he fell down with it. He was trying to keep his footing. Traveling our Johnny. The Aggies turn it over. Yeah, good offensive rebound by Johnny and, and that's just a tough call. Loses his balance a little bit. The Aggies are going to extend their pressure here a little bit, it looks like. But that plays into Tarleton. Good steal by Teddy Allen. Teddy's been active, leads the Aggies in steals this year. Down the lane, Donnie Tillman, acrobatic finger roll. That's what we were talking about with Donnie Tillman. And it's he can, coming. He can do that. He can catch the ball and he can put it on the floor and go finish. Donnie's had so many great moments during his Aggie career and during his entire career as a whole. And Johnny McCants just picked up his second personal. Aggies are getting beat on that, that backdoor cut. And, and look at Donnie right here. Look at him. Finger roll, spreads his legs. It looks good. That looks good. Nice to have Donnie back. He looks healthy. McCants will take a seat. Mike Peek in. More minutes for Peak tonight, probably, without you at ELOC. Taj Small, senior from Durham, North Carolina, the WAC Player of the Week. Hopkins can't finish. Teddy Allen with his fourth board. Finds Rice in transition. Jabari stays patient with it. Needs to get out of the key. We've had two three-second violations on the Aggies. We had one earlier, and here's our second and half one. You might not see that call for four or five games in a row. Now we've seen it twice in one half a play. And, and you got to give credit to Tarleton. They, they stop the ball, and then they get good hands, good pressure, and, and everybody else is denying. It's hard for the Aggies to get anything going. Everything folks have said we've seen so far. They're scrappy, they play hard, they're very good at getting in the passing lanes. And they're as active as any defense in the WAC. You see that right there. It was poked away by Gibson. But the ball will go to the Aggies with 5.54 left here in the first half. The Aggies switching defenses right here. They went into a little zone right there. They've gone back and forth between man and zone. But, but Gibson's a guy. He's been hot tonight. Just got to find him, whatever defense you're in. Mario McKinney checked by Hopkins. That's a tough handoff to Teddy Allen, defended by Jay Sean Moore, who just came in off the bench for Tarleton. Good finish, a muscle finish for Teddy Allen, the big 6'6 guard. 
Tarleton makes it tough, and you're going to have to make tough finishes like that. But I love things that go downhill and at the rim. That's what the Aggies need to, be, need to do to be successful. Tax in scoreless drought is approaching three minutes. Small working on Henry, and he shoved off on the Aggie senior guard. Clayton Henry's done that a few times during his career. Yeah, he's got a little swagger. Cuts him off, gets his feet set, squared. That's good defense, and that's what Clayton can do. Not easy to come out of the backcourt against this bunch. McKinney for Teddy Allen. Looking for Tillman, that is a tough catch stolen by Hicks. Three purple jerseys right around Donnie Tillman who was trying to catch it. And then McKinney intercepts. Works his way to the rim. Finger roll finish for the St. Louis and Mario McKinney. And Billy Gillespie will use a timeout for Tarleton. We've had a number of turnovers on both sides recently, and this one leads to a Mario McKinney score. Similar to Donnie Tillman, he can really get up. Yeah, athletic, go finish above the rim. That They can get out in transition. If Tarleton's going to throw bad passes and turn the ball over, they can get out in transition, and, and that helps alleviate some of that pressure that, that Tarleton has on every... He's been around the block a time or two, and his coaching style is still similar, and one thing you can really guarantee about a, a Billy Gillespie coach ball club is they're going to play hard. And and you see that, and you see that Tarleton plays hard. There's some guys out there that, that I wouldn't want to see if mm -hmm. I was still playing. I wouldn't want to see just because they play so hard. Jay Sean Moore with it. Seldom used freshman from Detroit. Gibson, good verticality by Donnie Tillman. Fans can't believe it. it. It seemed like Gibson touched it last. Chris Giant is saying Donnie never touched it. No, it didn't look like he touched wow. it. Lob for Hicks, and Mike Peake meets him at the rim. And that'll be Aggie ball, which, quite frankly, that probably should have been Tarleton ball. I think it was touched by Peak last, so maybe it evens itself out, and the Aggies will have the possession. McKinney works his way across the timeline, defended by Hopkins. The Aggies trying to extend their 6-0 run. McKinney lost it. Those hands are active. It was Gibson who poked it to a streaking Freddie Hicks. Good defense, Mike Peak. Tillman finds McKinney, gets the defender in the air. Whips it out for Peak. And Mike will reset the Aggie offense here with under four left in the first half. And it's going to be real important for the Aggies to make strong passes. Don't give up your dribble so quickly. Teddy makes a, that's a good move. Good Euro step, oh. finish. That's a good move. That's what you... Tarleton makes it tough on you. You're going to have to make those tough moves and tough finishes. Teddy Allen maneuvered around a couple of defenders. 8-0 Aggie run. Turnovers are starting to really rack up for Tarleton. They've committed seven. Four in the previous four minutes. Jay Sean Moore finishes around the rim. Doesn't play much, only averages a point and a half per game. Has only scored in four of the 12 games he has played in this year. That pressure almost extends out to midcourt for Tarleton defensively. They are in every passing lane. And these are guys who haven't left the game yet. A lot of minutes. Mike Pete, the two-handed stuff. And those quick, quick rip drives, that's what you're going to have against this pressure because they're extended so far trying to deny that first pass. Good move by Mike Pete. Peek is getting more minutes with you at a lock unavailable. And he's taking advantage of those minutes. Donnie Tillman active out on Gibson with the help. Yeah, the Aggies starting to pressure themselves a little bit. They're countering the Tarleton pressure. Moore stumbles and one. 
Good possession for the first 28 seconds in the shot clock, and then with two on the timer, Tarleton gets the bucket. We'll shoot a free throw when we come back from break. The Aggies trying to get some separation. They lead by six, 29-23. Whack action here at the Pan Am. And there's a handful of students wearing full-blown Aggie blazers. There you go, right there. Some students, some non-students. So somebody's getting these somewhere. And Jill Garza might wear one Saturday night. We don't know. One, one can only hope that I'll get my hands on one before Saturday. Jay Sean Moore getting ready to shoot one free throw for Tarleton. The Texans from Stephenville, Texas, head coach Billy Gillespie. The officials wanted to make sure they had the right shooter at the free throw line. It is Moore. He made the bucket before the timeout, was fouled by Mario McKinney. Johnny McCants on the bench, and he will be there for the rest of the half with two personal fouls for the Aggies. The Aggies already a little more thin in the front court with you at ALOC unavailable. So a lot of minutes for Peek and Tillman off the Aggie bench. The Aggies have led the entire game. We've had one tie as well. No leads for Tarleton. And a reach and foul is called on Taj Small. And that's foul number seven on the Texans. So one and one upcoming for the Detroit native, Donnie Tillman. Be a little touch foul, but the Aggies won't complain about that one. Get the free throws. And that's a foul that Billy Gillespie will live with because Tarleton is so active with their hands. They'll pick up a cheap one here and there. What they can't do is get some of these guys in foul trouble because they just don't have a whole lot of guys available. And that's the third on Taj Small. Two fouls on Bogues and two on McDavid. So some foul issues right now for Tarleton. And here today, they have only gone seven deep. Tillman splits the pair. But Jay Sean Moore's giving the Texans good minutes right now. Number 55 in purple. Yeah, Aggies play that three-quarter court pressure, and it drops into a little zone here. And I like this, but you got to find 11. you got to find Gibson. He's going to float around, get a drive, and kick out. That's what you don't want. Just make sure you know where he's at at all times. Gibson for three with one on the timer. Another one. That's four made threes for Gibson. He has 14. He was the Texans' leading scorer last season, 15 a game. He's averaging the same number this year, but he is second on the team in scoring behind Small. We might not see Small for a while with those three fouls. Donnie Tillman leaves the floater short. One possession game here in the final minute of half one. Gibson has some clearance, misfires on that one. A little heat check right there. He's been shooting the ball well. Clayton Henry for three. He's shooting with confidence now, Joe. Yeah, and that's what happens. You, you take a questionable shot on one end, usually it ends up with a wide open shot on the other end. Moore swings it for Noah McDavid. Tend to shoot for Tarleton. Hopkins trying to break down McKinney. A left-hander versus a left-hander. Good move by junior Javante Hopkins. Aggies can get a shot here in the final five seconds. McKinney gets the defender in the air, and he draws a foul from three. Little pump fake. A little acting job. Billy Gillespie does not like that call one bit. Yeah, leaned into Hicks a little bit, and if you jump, that could certainly happen from three. If the offensive player gets you in the air, then you're at a huge disadvantage right there. Yeah, and McKinney did a good job of drawing the foul and 
And that's just free free throws for the Aggies right here before the half ends. McKinney's been a little bit up and down from the free throw line this year, 68%. He's a much better shooter than that. Sophomore from St. Louis. It's two out of the three. 0.5 left for Tarleton. And it doesn't go for Gibson. So the Aggies make six of their final seven from the field in the half. They shot 50%. It didn't feel like it, though, Joe. It felt like they were closer to 40, but in the end, the number shows 50% from the field in that first half. Yeah, and that's from offensive rebounds, getting to the basket, and they've been shooting the ball well. Again, high percentage shots. Taj Small will start half two for Tarleton with those three fouls. Both programs go with their original starters to start the second half. Great to have you with us tonight. 26 straight conference wins at the Pan Am Center for the Aggies. Trying to extend that streak tonight. Hicks is stuffed. A little too easy for the big 6'10", Will McNair. Would like to see Jabari Rice get off to a start in half two like he got off to a start in half one. Made two early threes in the game. Here's Rice, gets the defender in the air. Pull-up jumper, no good. McNair clears it. Henry will fire. He is shooting with loads of confidence right now. Eight for the Canadian. Great offensive rebound there by Will. That's what you're going to get Will so big compared to these other guys out here. Kicks it out to Clint Clayton, and in rhythm, he's shooting the ball well. Will's been a beast on the boards again tonight. Aggies have their largest lead of the game. And a foul is called away from the ball. As we get a second look at the McNair O board and the Henry three-pointer. We figured he would get back to this point. It was just going to take time. You don't come back from a foot injury, and then all of a sudden you're 100% and ready to go. Right, it took time. And, and those games that they played earlier at home against Northern New Mexico, Permian Basin, those are the ones where we needed to get Clayton in a rhythm, and it looks like he's in it now. Andre Gibson guarded by Rice. Now defended by McCants on the switch. Hicks back to Gibson, and he shoots it and makes it right over Johnny McCants. Thought maybe Johnny would get a piece of it. And Gibson, who's only 5'11", a high arcing three goes in for him. That Rice pass is deflected by the Texans out of bounds on the baseline. And that's Johnny. He just takes a step too far in, a little late on the closeout. And the way Gibson's been shooting the ball, you just can't come off him right there at the end of the clock. Normally, that will phase a shooter. Didn't phase Gibson one bit when the 6'8 McCants was flying at him. Gibson now with 17, five threes, 15 of his 17 on threes. And a reach and foul on either Hopkins or Gibson. It could go on either Tarleton Texan. They call it on Javante Hopkins. And I like them getting Johnny the ball right here. I think Johnny makes a lot of good decisions. They're going to collapse on him like that, so he's got to make quick passes and make the right read. Aggies enter for McNair. Curling is Henry. They're running plays right now for the senior from Canada. Ride that man, Chris Jans, right? Ride the hot hand right now. Hopkins defended by McCants. McCants will sag off, and then Hopkins hits the mid-range jumper. Johnny was daring him to shoot it. Teddy Allen looking for McCants. It was just out of his reach. A good idea. Johnny had him sealed a bit. Yeah, I think Teddy needs to just take his time right there, make a pass over the top. It doesn't have to be a bounce pass because these guys are so little, they can throw it over the top. And there's Johnny daring him to shoot. Takes a little jumper, and, and they'll take that. Like I said, they want to shoot fast. They want possessions to be fast. They reverse it around the arc, and they find their shooter, Gibson. Finally misses. 
Leared by Rice. Lob pass to McNair from Allen. It was deflected. Will was trying to tap it to himself. Grabbed by McCants. He finds his positioning, and he'll slip it in. Yeah, he's really crashing the offensive glass here in the second half. But Tarleton shooting threes. They're keeping it close still. Six offensive rebounds for the game now for the Aggies. Only one for Tarleton. Hopkins blocked by McCants. And that might have been what he was daring him to do earlier. But instead, Hopkins earlier shot a mid-range jumper. Henry dump off. Will McNair had it spin out. Good find by Clayton Henry. Open is Hicks. Doesn't shoot a whole lot of threes. Missed it wide left. And Rice collects his fourth board. Not sure what the call was there. They were pointing at Clayton Henry. The officials will head to the scorer's table and explain it. There wasn't a foul. I'm not sure what happened there, Joe. Okay, a flop warning. Was it Arn Hicks? I'm not exactly sure why. <laughs> I didn't see it looks, oh, it was on Clayton. It must have okay, been on Clayton. Okay, yep, yep, yep. I was going to say, if it was on the shooter, I never saw Hicks fly to the ground. Lap warning on Henry. Yeah, I think that was a good call there. After we saw the replay. Pass is stolen on the backside by Hicks. Bogues lays it in. Tarleton won't go anywhere. And I think that's the right pass by Teddy Allen, but a long looping pass like that with these quick guards. Billy Gillespie just got teed up. And his return to the borderland. The former head coach at UTEP, also the former bench boss at Kentucky, Texas A&M, Texas Tech. And this comes at a crucial juncture. Tarleton's been hanging in there. It's a six-point Aggie lead, 15-52 left. And half number two from the Pan American Center. We'll step aside back after this for some technical free throws for the Aggies. It needs to come with the matching pants, though. I'm not going to wear probably them probably does. If I don't have the Pajama matching pants. Pajama pants, or? I need something. I need something that matches. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it 100%. Right. I think that would have been good for Christmas. I, I don't know if if it's good going into January. I, I think you could have pulled it off in Christmas. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if Joe surprises us Saturday. Technical free throws for Teddy Allen after Billy Gillespie was teed up prior to the under-16 media. Teddy is a 90% free throw shooter, best in the WAC. Quiet nine for Teddy today. Billy Gillespie's done a really good job at Tarleton. Only his second year. They're still transitioning to Division I from Division II. This is year two of their transition period. So they are still ineligible for the postseason. Because of that, they will not be in Vegas. And they are not eligible for the NCAA tournament yet. Rice, Allen, Henry, McNair, and Tillman. Aggies with the ball in the home whites. They lob it for McNair, help defense there. Three players converging on McNair, and it goes out of bounds. They're trying to lob it down low, but that help side defense is there so quick, Joe. Yeah, when you throw a, a pass from the three-point line all the way down to the block, that gives those, those guards time to get down there, and then Will just can't bring the ball down. That's where all the hands are. That's where the defense is. Keep it up. Let's finish it at the rim. Freddy Hicks pushes it outside for Taj Small, who's had a quiet night. He's had some foul trouble as well. Bogues on the bounce. Gibson back out for Bogues. Doesn't shoot many threes. This one will swirl off. He was three for 14 from three for the year coming in. Every pass contested. Poked away there by Bogues, but he got some body on Donnie Tillman. And they're going to continue to play like that. They're going to have active hands. 
Aggies just got to do a good job of executing and, and really just don't turn the ball over. And take care of the ball and get high percentage shots. Foul number three on Bogue, so he joins Small with three personals for Tarleton. Rice, a contested oh. three. Backside offensive rebound, Allen, and then he got it stripped away. He thought he was fouled there. Gibson's oh. layup is no good. This is getting even more physical. We'll see how the officials call this the final 15 minutes. It didn't look like Jabari did much, but enough to get a call. And Gibson, 77% free throw shooter. Tarleton, three and one in the whack. Lone whack loss came at Utah Valley two weeks ago. They're one and eight on the road overall this year. Seven and one at home in Stephenville. <laughs> Aggies got their lead up to nine early on in the half. And now it's back down to six. Rice backing down Hopkins, now defended by Small on the switch. He'll go to work on Small, and if that's on Taj Small, that's his fourth. Yep, it's on him. And he will have to take a seat. He just can't get rolling. This is the WAC player of the week who's only scored two points, and he's been in foul trouble all night. It's been tough on him tonight. And there goes Tarleton into their bench. It's not deep couple guys, got a lot of guys sitting over there, but not a lot of guys play. So we'll see if the Aggies can take advantage of that. Tarleton has only used two bench players tonight, Moore and Hopkins. Both guys have done some good things for them. McDavid comes in for small, and the inbound entry is tapped by Hicks. It's loose, and no jump ball yet. They just let him play on. Pulled away by Tarleton. Their hands are everywhere. They really get in those passing lanes, even on inbound passes from the baseline. Bank shot is no good for Gibson, but he picks it up, and then he's stripped by McCants. Rice down the key, hands it off to McCants, but he's fouled before the dish off. And the Aggies will have the ball on the baseline. It looks like Jabbar was there to drop it off. But like I said, just can't turn the ball over on these inbounds plays. Can't let Tarleton get out in transition. Chris Jans knew what Tarleton was like coming in, but it is really, really hard to duplicate this in practice. Donnie Tillman whistled for the charge. Aggies haven't made a field goal in three minutes. You can try in practice to replicate what they do defensively, but it is just really, really hard to do so in practice because this is not who the Aggies are defensively, per se. Yeah, and they have a lot of guys, but still, it's just, it's really hard to replicate that. And then what you do in practice doesn't always translate to the game. It's a little bit different, and it's not exactly the same as what you practice, but, but the Aggies can adjust. They can handle it. Tarleton has missed six of their previous seven from the field. They haven't committed any turnovers here in this half. The Aggies have committed four. Javante Hopkins, junior out of Houston, working on Henry, lost it, picked up by Clayton Henry. Henry McCants, Tillman, Allen, and Rice for the Aggies. Teddy's only attempted six from the field today, three for six. He'll go to work here on Moore. Teddy Allen to the rim. Didn't really time his jump, and it's rebounded by McDavid. And those drives are tough, the way Tarleton helps so much. Got to come to a jump stop and kick it or, or finish over the top of him. Here's Gibson around the screen. High arcing jumper is good. 21 for Montre Gibson. He's playing. He, he's playing right now. 
He has played every minute tonight, and he has played every minute in every WAC game this year. He has not left a game in WAC play. Leads the country in minutes played as McCants throws it away out of bounds. Fifth Aggie turnover here in this half alone. And just a simple pick and roll here. And Johnny gets a good hand, but like you said, high arcing shot. He can play, he can score the ball. Gibson scored 19, the previous meeting between these two programs. Tarleton actually beat the Aggies last year in Stephenville. It was a huge win for their program. They were 10 and 10 a year ago, five and seven in the WAC. McCants defending the 5'11 Gibson. Gibson gets open with three to shoot in the key. Good. No good, snatched by Rice, and then Gibson right there to poke at it again. Rice kicks it, Allen a wide open three. Well, we'll see if they can get him going in this half now. He's been quiet, like you said. I mean, a quiet 12 and 5, but see if we can get Teddy going. Teddy, two for four now on a threes, and Tillman a little too aggressive trying to poke it away at midcourt. Gets whistled for the foul 47 feet away from the hoop. That's three now on Tillman. So that will bring Mike Peek back in the game. And that's what happens when they collapse. You gotta get two feet in the paint. Jabari makes a great pass on time, on target. That's the shot that we want. McKinney in for Rice. So now the Aggies go with Henry Peek McCants, McKinney and Teddy Allen. Ahead by seven, they have not trailed, but Tarleton Hasn't gone anywhere. They trailed by as many as nine, but they keep on fighting back. Back to her pass to Moore. Grabbed by Teddy Allen. Numbers if he hurries. McKinney outside for McCants. It's been a quiet night for Johnny, who has only scored four points. Had some foul issues in the first half. Mike Peek will score in the triple. Friendly bounce for Peek. And a foul after the made three on Hicks as well. So a foul on Hicks after Peek made the three. The Aggies have made two straight threes and they have their biggest lead of the night. Aggies ahead by 10 here at the Pan Am. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us and go Aggies. Go Aggies. Thank you, Tatiana. Thank you, Doug Eddings. As part of the postseason this past year, the division series, Doug Eddings, a local product, and another local product who's a major league umpire is Tony Randazzo, and we'll have him on the air with us on Saturday after he's honored on the floor here at the Pan American Center. So we look forward to that. Pretty cool, there's two major league baseball umpires, and both guys did the playoffs the previous year that Live locally. McCants fires it outside for Mario McKinney. McKinney works his way to the rim. And he pinballs in the floater. Mario McKinney now with a half dozen off the Aggie bench. And he's had a solid game. He's had a solid game with, with Nate Pryor being out. He's got to step up, and he stepped up tonight. Teddy Allen active all night defensively. Tell you what. We talked about it before. He's not just scoring for the Aggies. He is defending. He is passing. He is rebounding. He's only attempted eight shots in this game. Teddy Allen, that is. And you feel like he's played a really good game because he's done everything else so well. Yeah, he's, he's starting to realize that he can do other things to help the team other than score. Before, he may have think that he needed to score all the points mm -hmm. or do anything like that. But no, he can impact the game in so many different ways. It's really great to see him step into that. Wide open three, Mario McKinney Jr. And the Aggie run grows to an 11-0 run over the previous minute and a half. And now they're starting to pull away here at home. Texans haven't scored in three minutes. Hicks leans into McCants and draws a personal. Brown, 
Aggies are four for five from three and a half. And they are seven for 12 from the field and a half. That is a wide open shot there for Mario. He'll hit that nine times out of 10 at least. And that's what we talk about, high percentage shots. Aggies shooting 50% from three. I don't think we've said that at all this whole season. This is one of those games where they're shooting the ball well and they needed it. Pressure might even ramp up even more now for Tarleton as they pick up here on the full court. Bogues defends McKinney. Slides across the midcourt line. Jump stops in the paint. Bounces out for Peak. That wasn't easy. Henry a rhythm three. Another one for Clayton Henry. He has 13 to pace the Aggies. And Johnny McCants draws a charge with three fouls nonetheless. He's doing a great job just getting in position, getting his hands up. It takes it right on the chest right there. That's, that's going to be a charge every day. No flop warning on that one. Mm -mm. Previous season high in points for Henry was six. He has 13 on five out of seven, shooting three out of five from three. McKinney throws it away, stolen by Moore. That was easy for him. Hicks finds Gibson in transition. And he's cooling off a bit now. Five on four for the Aggies. Moore is late to get back. Rice will reset with under 10 left here in half two. McKinney for three. McCants had it roll off his crimson shoe. And Henry is bumped by Gibson. That'll send Clayton to the free throw line for one in the bonus. Is it as easy as saying that he has his legs back, Joe? I, th I think it is. He, we, I talked to him after a couple of the games. I said, hey, man, what's going on with you? What's going on? He's like, I just don't have my legs. My mm -hmm. conditioning is not there. My legs aren't there. And now I th it, you can see on the replays, he's smiling and throwing his hands in the air. His legs are back. His conditioning is there. And he's getting high percentage shots. And, and Clayton's really knocking him down, taking opportunities. The Aggies only had one game last week. It was Saturday against UTRGB. That first game was canceled at Lamar. So because of that, they have more practice time. And, and I think for Clayton Henry, number five in white right there, I, I think it really helped him more than anybody. Because like you said, he needed that practice conditioning to work his way back into game shape. It's not like he had a hand injury and you can still condition. He had a foot injury. You can't run. So your conditioning is going to be out of whack if you have a foot injury. So he's working his way back, and he is showing flashes of how good he can be. The Ag is extending their pressure a little bit right here. They're in a little zone. See if Tarleton can get a good shot out of this. McNair might have altered it. He tapped it off the backboard and then he fouls more. Now just looking at it, you say, okay, that's a huge advantage for Will McNair, right? Because he's guarding the 6-6 six, six more, but there's also a little bit of an advantage there for Moore because he has a little more athleticism around that cylinder than Will does. Yeah, you can see the look on Will's face. He's not too happy about that one, but we just got to box out and grab that board and, and go back the other way. Big lift off the bench for Tarleton from Jay Sean Moore, the freshman from Detroit. He actually started the first two conference games, came off the bench in the previous two. Pinballs off the second throw. And they're not going to go away. You're going to see them extend this pressure. They're going to switch on screens. Let's see if the Aggies can get a good shot. And that's off the leg of McDavid. It will stay with the Aggies. 
These are always the toughest defenses to play because they take you out of your offense. You've got to start to do different things. What you want to do is not there. The first pass is not there. So the Aggies kind of have to adjust on the fly. Backdoor cuts, switches on screens. It, Tarleton does a good job of just taking you out of your offense. Rice will trigger in for Peek. He curls and fires and makes the three. Another three for the Aggies. 10 for 19. This might be that breakout shooting game we were looking for from distance. Lead elevates to 20. Back door to Hicks. And he scores right around Peek. Rice running the point here for the Aggies. Aggies are shooting 60% from the field in half two. Tarleton at 29% in the half. Rice gets Hicks in the air. Peak again. A little too heavy on that one. Peaks in double figures for the second straight game. Rice sends it towards the student section. And that'll send us to break. The Aggies led by six at the halftime break. They've outscored the Texans by 12 and half two. Aggie Elite is 18, looking for their ninth straight win. Like you said, Clayton, actually from Calgary, Canada, is making his way back up to the top after battling injuries for the last two seasons. In fact, he started this year with an injury as well, starting off with his hand injury and most recently a foot injury. But now, like you guys were saying earlier, he's in a much better position to hit the ground running. And since the start of the 2019-2020 season, the clash against Northern New Mexico game at the Pan Am was only his second game played here. So that being said, he's healthy, he's hungry for more, ready to contribute, and wants to finish his career strong, hopefully with a conference championship. Adam, Joe? Thank you, Tatiana. We're supposed to be unbiased in the media, Joe, and you're part of the media now. You're on the dark side. But man, it's it's really hard to not root for Clayton Henry. Like when he's on the floor, you want him to do well because of everything he's been through and he's done it with a smile on his face the entire way. Yeah, he's had a great attitude about everything and, and it's tough that that kind of stuff happens. But the way he's handled it is is very good on his part. Jump ball possession Aggies. Things got a little heated there and Donnie Tillman kept his composure well. A lot of guys would have quit basketball, would have tried to go overseas and play professionally, would have done something else, but Clayton Henry has stuck here through thick and thin. And he is just looking to win basketball games. That's his main focus right now. Vershawn Cotton is back in. He's in the right corner area right now for the Yankees, number 12 in white. Teddy Allen has the basketball here. Lobs it for Tillman, defended by McDavid. Teddy Allen triggers and he connects again. Three for five from distance. The 11th made three for the Aggies. Dogs can't answer, Rice collects. The Aggies are seven for 10 from three and a half. Allen again, a step back triple, left it short. Little heat check there for Teddy Buckets. It only takes one to go in before you get a heat check from Teddy. I love cool that. With that. Shoot or shoot. Six twenty-five left here in the second half. The pass is thrown away by Chase Sean Moore. What's led to this separation for the Aggies? I know the three-point shooting is obviously something that you can point to, but do you feel like the Aggies have handled this pressure better and Tarleton's maybe wearing down a bit here in half two, Joe? Yeah, I think those threes are just discouraging for a defense. I mean, you work so hard, you work so hard, and then a guy makes a three at the end of the clock and you kind of start to drop your head a little bit, you know? And, and the Aggies have been making, what, seven threes this half. Mm -hmm. Tarleton struggled, they've turned the ball over a little bit of late, and, and that kind of stuff adds up on the scoreboard. Rice Brown, his first minutes tonight for Tarleton. He's the eighth Tarleton player to see action. Number 25 in purple. Bogues down the key, and he draws a foul. Two 
we've talked about efficiency a lot this year with Teddy Allen. This is one of his more efficient games. Five for 10 from the field, three for six from three, two for two on free throws. He's talking to James Miller here, the associate head coach. A very efficient night for Teddy. And we talk about it being a quiet night, but, but it's not quiet to Coach Jans. It's, when you watch the film again, you're gonna see how much he impacted the game and how important it is to just have him on the floor playing good basketball. We get a lane violation potentially on Teddy Allen here. He wandered into the arc quicker than he was supposed to, so Bogues will get a second chance at it. Fans are cheering loud because they get some raising canes if Bogues misses again. And he missed it. Free food for everybody. You'll see me at Canes after this <laughs> with my Aggie blazer on. We actually have a lot of fans tweeting at us, Joe, that you can get that blazer. In fact, some of the fans have uh, said they would give up their blazer for you. So we might make that happen as well. Hershon <laughs> Cotton gets in on the act. And Chris Jans is all smiles because of that feed by Jabari Rice. He loves it. Allen steals it away from Bryce Brown. Rice is calling for it on the opposite end. Cotton again. No good. Rebounded by Hicks. Gibson maneuvers right around. McCanton lays it in. He has 23. But you can see the energy and the body language of the Aggies. When those shots go in, the, the game just changes completely. Rice leans into the defender who is in the air, doesn't get a foul called, he can't believe it. He's stunned. And the official tells Jabari the defender was going straight up, not leaning towards him. And Jabari's telling the official, why did he land on me then if he was straight up? Either way, it's a no call with under five left here in half two. Hicks is backing down Rice, and he's fouled by Cotton on the help side defense. For being, for being an undersized team, they do attack the basket a lot. They want to bully you, you know, 6'4", 6'5", trying to bully 6'10s. And they matched up just fine with some big time blue blood programs. Kansas, Michigan, Stanford, Gonzaga when they were number one. In fact, they only lost to Gonzaga by nine. Lost to Michigan by 11, Stanford by 12. They were in those games down the stretch. Gibson will pick up for Sean Cotton. The prior unavailable, you at Alock unavailable for the Yankees tonight. Still not 100%. And before the pass, Tillman called for the offensive foul, his fourth. I like that set right there. Get the ball to Johnny, a little high, low action. But Johnny just a little too strong down there. Great find by Jabari. Like I said, great things happen when you go downhill, kick outs for threes, high percentage shots. That was actually the fifth on Donnie Tillman, so he's done. McNair will come in. 15 helpers on 25 made field goals. Is that a pretty good number in yeah. your eyes? Yeah, I think that's pretty good. 15 assists. Jabari's got four of them. He's had the ball in his hands the majority of the game. Hicks will launch. And Vershawn Cotton, one of the smallest players on the floor, skies high to grab it. Rice 
Rice trying to isolate here with Hicks. Rice slithers in the key, floater is short. And here comes Tarleton with under four left. Hicks again. This time he'll make it. And a timeout is called by second year Texans head coach Billy Gillespie. He'll coach his tail off until the final buzzer, that's for sure. Aggies have led by as many as 24. They lead by 18, the final four minutes when you come back. Here's a look at the WAC race right now. The Aggies are 3-0 because the cancellation against Lamar counts as a forfeit win for WAC tourney seeding. So it's included here in the standings graphic. Grand Canyon also got a forfeit win against Lamar. And Tarleton, before this one, they were in a good spot. They're in a position right now to fall to three and two, and then they're gonna travel to Phoenix Saturday and play a good Grand Canyon program, while the Aggies will welcome in Abilene Christian. Abilene Christian two and two after winning their first two and then dropping two straight. Will McNair, a confident three, he bricked it, but he scoops up the miss. Everybody's feeling it now. Will says, I want some as well. Inside, outside to Jabari Rice. McCants the offensive rebound and he'll pull it out to the arc. He'll skip it out for Vershawn Cotton. The Aggies will try to chew some clock with 3.20 left. Skip pass near corner. Will's not shy one bit. And he misses a pair of trays on the possession. I mean, those are open shots. I don't mind Will taking them. He's shown that he can make them. That'll stay with Tarleton. And we get a timeout on the floor with 3.05 left here in half number two. Aggies have connected on a dozen threes. They lead by 18 here at home. They've made 12 for the game, Joe, eight and a half, two, and it's been a number of guys who have shot it well from beyond the arc. Yeah, we got a, guys, a lot of guys that can shoot it. Mike Peak shooting it, Teddy shooting it, Jabari shooting it. Sean Cotton got a few threes up. And even Mario McKinney right there mm -hmm. making open shots. Clayton Henry right here makes this three. He has three made threes. Season high, 15 for Henry. That's certainly one of the storylines tonight. And then Mike Peake, his second straight double-figure scoring game. He had none before last Saturday against UTRGB, and now he has two in a row. And the Aggies needed him without you at a lock. And with McCants in foul trouble in half one, McNair hasn't played as much as usual. So Mike Peake with some solid minutes. It's nice, it's nice to be able to have guys that can come off the bench and, and you know they're going to produce for you. And Mike Peake's one of those guys. Here's Bryce Brown. Misses over McNair. Trying to pick it up. And the foul is called on Jabari Rice. This has been one of those games where neither side has been all that happy with the officiating during the course of the game. In fact, Billy Gillespie was teed up earlier. He was teed up during a juncture when Tarleton had pulled within six. This game for a while was a whole lot closer than what it is right now. Bryce Brown, three for three now on free throws this season. There's Billy Gillespie on the bench for Tarleton. Second year after coming over from Ranger Junior College, and he brought a couple of players with him. Montre Gibson and Shakur Daniel came to Tarleton from Ranger. A lot of success in his brief time at that JUCO. Good pass by Vershot Cotton. He finds Mike Peake, who now has 12. And that is a new season high for the transfer from Austin Peake. Yeah, this is the time when everyone starts to settle into their roles a little bit more. Earlier in the season, everyone was still trying to figure it out. But, but in conference is when they really wanted everyone to know what they're doing. 
And Mike Peake's doing a great job. Rebound for Allen, his sixth. Christians doesn't really have a bench to empty, by the way, in case you're wondering where's the bench. Rice is step in, corner three is an air ball. The Aggies will bring in LeVar Williams next dead ball. He hasn't played yet tonight. The only other player in uniform who hasn't played is walk on Cameron Crawford. Layup is no good for Hicks, and he'll shoot two. We can look ahead a bit, Joe. We'll look ahead to Saturday when the Aggies play Abilene Christian. We feel like it, it's going to be a similar defensive style to what the Aggies saw against Tarleton here tonight. Can that help that you saw this style a couple days before and maybe that pressure won't face the Aggies as much as the Tarleton pressure did in the first half tonight? They'll be able to go back and look at the film and see what Tarleton did and see where they had success. And they'll try and do those same things against Abilene Christian. It's going to be similar, obviously a different team coming in. Uh, Abilene Christian's a good team as well. They're going to come in here and try and knock the Aggies off like everybody else is. But as long as the Aggies do what they do, they'll be all right. Second free throw is good for Hicks, and Jalen Jack will come in for Tarleton, Jr. from Atlanta, Georgia. For the folks that don't know, Abilene Christian is led by Brett Tanner, who's in his first year as the head coach at Abilene Christian, but he was on Joe Golding's staff when they upset Texas last year in the NCAA tournament. Joe Golding got the UTEP job, and Brett Tanner was promoted to head coach at Abilene, so it's a very similar defensive style to what they've had in the past because, yeah, there was a coaching, coaching change, but there wasn't a style change at all for ACU. Will McNair hooks it through. Six and six tonight for Will. I think they're going to need Will again on Saturday as well. Hopefully we can continue to shoot the ball well. But, but, but as you see there, Will's just a force down there. He's a big guy. I keep on asking Christians every chance I get. As Cameron Crawford, number 20 in white. Walk on, in-state product comes in. I keep on asking coach, it seems like that confidence is growing and Will's starting to play like you want him to and he said we just need him to be more consistent. We need it every day in practice, every day in the games. We're still searching for that everyday consistency but he is certainly making big time strides during his redshirt sophomore year. And like we talked about earlier in the season, that. This is the time when we want it, when conference is going. You want Clayton Henry to start getting into a rhythm. You want Jabari to be in a good rhythm. Will, you want him to be in a good rhythm. So you're playing your best basketball when it matters the most. Here's Brown defended by Cotton. Can't get it to go, and Cotton fouls him. Abilene Christian at Grand Canyon tonight. How about that? Travel Partners, NM State, Grand Canyon. So if you go on the road in the WAC, you're going to see those two schools on the road. That is that's, a tough road stretch, isn't it? That's a tough road stretch. That reminds me, of we, used to go to, we used to go to Bakersfield and Grand Canyon yep. in the same weekend. Yep. That was tough. And Grand Canyon's up big on Abilene Christian tonight. At ECU Arena, so it looks like Abilene Christian will come in two and three in the WAC. And... The Aggies and Grand Canyon will both still be undefeated in league play. And that game is looming closer than you think. January 29th here at the Pan Am Center. Mike Peak down the lane, ripped away by Luke Winslow, freshman from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma for Tarleton. And now Winslow will fire a three and he hits the back iron. And Vershawn Cotton will dribble it out and the Aggies will improve to 4-0 in the WAC. I think they got a lot of good things tonight against this pressure. I haven't seen that all season, but conference is starting. Teams are going to start throwing different things at them. Aggies did a good job tonight and came out with a win. A much better second half. That first half, it didn't feel like the Aggies had a six-point lead at the break. Yeah, they had a six-point lead, but Tarleton was right there, and the Aggies got off to a good start in half two, and that really propelled them when they got up 24 and then kind of cruised after that. 
Yeah, those threes helped. Their defense turned up a little bit. And those kind of things will blow the game open like that. And, and that's, what, that's what you see reflected on the scoreboard. The game was a lot closer than the scoreboard indicates. The Aggies never trailed today. They win by 16 here against the Tarleton Texans. 4-0 in the WAC, 14-2 overall. And winners of nine in a row for the Aggies' 27 straight conference wins here at the Pan Am. Coach Giant is standing by with Tatiana Favela. Hey, guys, I'm now joined with head coach Chris Jens. Coach, go ahead and tell us what are your thoughts on this win over Tolchin. We expected a rock fight. Got a lot of respect for Coach Gillespie, their staff, and their, their players. They're playing really hard all year long. Played a great schedule, some really stiff competition. They're 3-1 and coming to the league, and that's what it was. You know, we got a little bit of separation at halftime, and then finally we were able to kind of wear them out with our depth and our size and uh, get some separation and get the win. And coming from this game moving forward, what are some things you want to focus on? Um, you know, turnovers have been an issue all year long for us. Uh, we knew that that would be something we had to value tonight. There's 11th in the country in turning the ball over. I think we had maybe 15, 16 turnovers, which sounds like a lot, but against them, uh, it's not that bad. I would like to have been 12 or 13, but it is what it is. All righty. Thank you so much, Coach. Congrats on the win. Adam, Joe, back to you. Thank you, Tatiana. All sideline reports are brought to you by Memorial Medical Center, the official healthcare partner of Aggie Athletics. Aggies win by 16. The new Senda Credit Union postgame show comes up next.